Kelly Martin was raised in Freeport, Illinois. She attended college in Michigan, eventually graduating with a degree in environmental education from Northland College in Wisconsin. Kelly started her National Park Service career at Apostle Islands National Lakeshore on Lake Superior. She went on to work for the U.S. Forest Service in Idaho, Utah, and Nevada. Kelly is currently Chief of Fire and Aviation Management at Yosemite National Park. She also serves on Incident Command Fire Teams as a Fire Behavioral Analyst. One of Kelly's consummate deep smart skills is her motivation to reflect on her wildland fire experiences through the lens of deep learning. She is especially alert to gaining insights from situations that have not turned out as planned. This includes prescribed fires that have gone out of control and the near misses that could have had severe consequences. Kelly has developed her own process for self-improvement. After a fire, she pauses to reflect, taking the time to better understand all that she can learn. Next, and this is probably the most important action of all, she dusts herself off and prepares to go back out and back at it once again. I think for me, um, I, I, it's almost every day is a new day. And, and I really, I think that's why I love fire management so much is that it really provides me with an opportunity to continue to learn every day something new. And if I end the day not learning something, um, I've missed an opportunity. And I think for me, that's why the work that I do is so, so fulfilling and so rich and um, I look back and it's just amazing how fast you know my career has gone. But I think being able to critically think about your decision-making process is imperative for anyone's success. And it doesn't have to be overt. It doesn't have to be, it's not like you have to air your dirty laundry. But I think the, your personal integrity rests upon your ability to be critical of yourself every day and say, yeah, I, I could have done something um, different. I could have done something better than, and, and had a different outcome. And I, I think that's really important. That's very important. A seminal learning experience for Kelly Martin was the waterfall fire that burned outside of Carson City, Nevada in July of 2004. The fire, burning in the drought-dried forest and grass sagebrush fuels on the Sierra front, blew up soon after the initial attack. The fire made a dramatic near-miss run over a group of firefighters huddled together in a cul-de-sac. It caused 18 homes to be destroyed, and when finally suppressed, it had burned 8,000 acres. Kelly used this sobering work experience to reflect on her own actions, what she was doing right, and what she could improve upon. I still look back on that as kind of a turning point in my career, because a lot of things happened. A lot of things kind of came together that, um, um, right, wrong, or indifferent, no one was killed. We lost some homes. Um, my, I think we know the nature of, of the beast there. We know that, that you know fires along the Sierra Front, any of the type of the wildland urban interface fires are, 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 are very life-threatening. But when you're in charge of something that, that, dare I say, goes wrong, but I also like to look at that situation and go, but no one was killed. So some things went right, too, in terms of making sure um, um, no one got hurt, seriously hurt or killed. To go through that process of um, fully disclosing the things that you could have done different or the team could have done different is, is not, not necessarily uh, promoted in a lot of ways. Um, so that, that process, that, that critical thinking the folks that are involved in the have to believe in that concept of critical thinking that they but it, it, it exposes some raw nerves and it exposes people's weak side and, I, and I'm not sure that people are very comfortable doing that um, you really have to be motivated by something bigger than yourself to bring out that that critical thinking in, in a peer group situation Kelly says that she pushes the limits to learn about herself and what she needs to work on to do a better job. Here, she describes her inner drive to take on new assignments, jobs that challenge her abilities. I'm the one that's always pushing the limits, and but I like to know that I push the limits based upon the best feedback and data that I can get 
from the people that I'm working with. And then I can think through critically to, to be able to take a very calculative risk based on the best information that I'm given. I've always been driven that way. I, 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 I enjoy um, those stretch assignments, if you will, because I become better at what I do. If I if I'm if I'm out there, but but it's it's a really it's a really fine line between taking that risk and pushing so far. Carl Weick and Kathleen Sutcliffe, experts on high reliability organizing or HRO, underscore the importance for wildland firefighters to possess high levels of resiliency the ability to be stretched and then bounce back. They believe that resiliency is an essential ingredient of an excellent job performance. Wildland firefighters with high levels of resiliency have developed the physical, mental, and emotional skills to recover from stressful work experiences, experiences that many of us would have seen as setbacks. Take a moment to reflect on Kelly Martin's insights and perspectives. Can you identify specific behaviors, attitudes or characteristics that made Kelly so resilient, that caused her, even during high stressful fire events, to always keep a learning attitude. What could you do to increase your own ability to be stretched and then to bounce back, to better endure, and to learn from your stressful work experiences?